Minnesota Community Voices. Today, we got a very special guest, you know, God level producer, uh, Grammy Award winner as well, correct? Yeah, yeah. Next one, uh, we got uh, Swiss Beats, man. Clap it up. Appreciate you, King, for taking the time. Zone, zone. <laughs> cool. So, yeah, let's jump right into it. Tell us about, you know, your, your fascination and you know appreciation of art and like where did that come from especially you know coming from the Bronx and you know you elevating and you know glowing in your career so how did that you know come to be um it actually came from growing up in the Bronx you know music and art was always around me art was always on the walls around me music was always the sound around me you know going in the back park and seeing the DJs do their thing and seeing the trains with the graffiti on it. So like art has always been part of my ecosystem. But, um, you know, as I grew older, I started to understand it more and started to go into the details. And um, I remember getting my first house and I wanted to put some art on the walls. And then that's what started making me curious, going to different galleries and things like that and figuring out, you know, um, what was available, what, you know, what connected with me, what didn't connect. And uh, the journey started way back. Yeah. So seeing as the journey started way back and now, you know, you're curating collections, the Dean collection, right? I remember in college, yeah. 2015, I went to the show and it was just full of like, you know, black artists, super amazingly like talented people. So how did that come into fruition? Um, the Dean collection came about with me wanting to build like a museum for, for my family and my kids to run for generations. And then uh, it was, it was, uh, I started it personal. And then I seen that when I started giving other artists and up and coming artists light, I seen them start to flourish. And I was like, wait a minute, you know, let's make this not just about the Dean collection, but make the Dean collection about everybody and uh, shine a light on artists and, you know, which led us to do no commissions and create the entry point um, for, our, for our communities to go uh, to get deeper into this art world. Beautiful. So question I have for you is like, you know, I remember, I think 2018, it was a, a James Marshall painting that sold for like 21 million, something like that, right? So, yeah, Kerry James. Mm -hmm. so do you feel because of just like the, you know, crazy amount of money, you know, painting sell for, because, you know, it's always going to appreciate, do you think, especially for like black, black artists, they should receive some type of royalties, especially now with like NFTs and things of that nature? when a painter of theirs sells for like that much. Yeah, I mean, like from that Kerry James Marshall sale, which which I was a part of, I wish, you know, I, that was the only thing that was missing from it. I wish that Kerry James got a percentage of that sale. You know, like that was like the only thing that, you know, me and Puff even spoke about. It's like, yo, that would have been, that would have been super fresh, you know, but yeah. I do have something that I've been working on called the Dean's Choice. Mm -hmm. where you know us as collectors when we sell works we give artists a piece of the works you know because like look at how high that painting went you know when he sold it it was for a couple of hundred thousand now you know it was sold for 20 something million now the painting's worth 40 million already right so right you know what if he could be a part of all of those things and you know the nft space it allows that but for you know um for digital art you know yeah, but I think we could, you know, I think we could take the blockchain model and use that towards the, you know, uh, the art that's not digital as well. So we can look at all those things. Yeah, because I feel like that's only fair. Just seeing as you know, as an artist, you're you know creating something that comes from like the soul and the heart and things like that, and then you sell it. But then it's like a couple years down the line even a decade you're like damn I sold this for like 100 100 bucks and now it's flipping or selling for like 30 million I'm like damn I can't get a piece of that so I feel like that's only fair and somehow hopefully I you know somewhere down the line people figure it out where it's like whether it's like you know the auction the auction house or whatever the case may be and cut that percentage yeah. to the artist yeah we've been working on it with them you know it's been good the conversation's been good so we're gonna see where it go from there you know yeah and last, you know, just talk about the presence and like, you know, I would say like the reemergence of like black artists, just like across the globe, especially in like the U.S. Because now you see 
you know, so many different artists. I can't really, you know, name one off the top of my head, but just like the amazing works that's been happening. And how do you feel about that? About the up and coming artists? Yeah. No, I think it's a, it's a different landscape, you know, um, happy to be a part of that landscape as well and introducing the new artists that would have never got um, shine uh, because the galleries were only, uh, and museums is only picking one form of art now. It's right. opened up to many layers of art. You know, they're not just looking at one side of art, you know, of non-living artists. They're looking at more living artists starting to break records, starting to, you know, uh, sell out their shows and starting to be picked up by these galleries. And this is why it was important to launch what we launched because now we can see the result. We can see the results of that, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, so... Again, you know, thank you. Ashley, talk about um, Rough Riders to the Rescue as well. Because I know, you know, Rough Riders, that's like, you know, your name is synonymous with that, so. Yeah. Well, Rough Riders to the Rescue is, um, it's actually, it's a nonprofit that uh, my aunt Siobhan Dean actually started. Um, she's always been into the philanthropic work and wanting to bring the communities and police our own communities. And so, you know, we have, uh, hundreds of chapters around the world, my Uncle Wild, my Uncle D, you know, uh, they run that. And, um, and um, you know, they, um, they, one second, guys, they, um, they police the hoods and stuff and start like, you know, using, they, you know, like say like, you got guys that get out of prison and things like that, you know, they become the police because they have the experience and, you know, listening to somebody that's from your community rather than the police that don't understand, that's just on the job, like help de-escalate situations. So Rough Eyes to the Rescue is pretty amazing and um, is, is growing rapid every 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 day, you know? So yeah. Uh, yeah, look out for that. For sure. And yeah, de-escalation is so important because, you know, sometimes, like you mentioned before, when you have like, you know, police officers from communities they haven't like grown up in or just not accustomed to the first you know, if something happens and their first reaction is like, you know, put the hand on the on the gun or whatever the case may be. When sometimes you just gotta have a conversation with somebody and de-escalate the situation. So, you know, I'm sure Work Riders to the Rescue is doing amazing work. And, you know, through this program, we've been donating to so many different charities and organizations and 501Cs. So, you know, we like to make a donation on your behalf to Work Riders to the Rescue of uh, 20,000. Continue, you know, the great work you've been doing, especially in the community. Thank you. Thank you. That's a big zone. That's a big zone. Absolutely. That's a big zone. We appreciate that. We appreciate that. Yeah, yeah the pleasure is ours. And um, yeah, thank you again. And I'll let you have the last words. You know, Rough Riders to the Rescue, look out for that. And everybody out there, sky's not the limits, it's just a view. You know, life begins at the end of your comfort zone. Stay focused, stay driven. Let's go. Swiss Absolutely. beat, zone, zone, zone.